Hi, this is your host Sapnil Bharatiya and welcome to TFI Let's Talk. Today we have two members, actually co-chairs of the CNC of Technical Advisory Group for Observability, Alalita Sharma and Matt Young. Alalita, Matt, it's great to have you both on the show. Yes, thank you. Looking forward to it. Very nice to be on the show and thank you, Sapnil. Yeah, and today's focus is going to be the, the recent observability micro survey. But before I go there, I would love to hear from you folks is that how have you seen the evolution of observability in the cloud native space? So observability uh, today, you know, uh, it's it's been a science for a long time, and and you know, it's not new. It's not a new area of science specific to cloud native uh, computing. But uh, that said, with the evolution of new services that have evolved in the cloud space. Uh, from different providers as well as you know a, traditional APM vendors, observability is very much live and well. It's the new um, uh, incarnation, if you will, of monitoring, uh, and and it also incorporates a lot of the systems level monitoring, um, you know, techniques and tools and ideas that have then been scaled up and incorporated into the cloud native space. Um, observability data only continues to grow. There's just, uh, you know, all the way from the edge networks to the uh, system services that are used for infrastructure as well as container services, you know, um, it's a whole swath. And looking at the types of observability data, whether that's traces, logs, or metrics, uh, there is just a tremendous amount of telemetry that we can collect today, which really leads to the opportunity for being able to build at scale cloud native, you know, observability services. Matt, I want to hear your uh, you know, opinion as well. How have you seen it evolve? As she said, observability is nothing new, but in the cloud native world, it's kind of, you know, uh, a totally different beast. Certainly. <clears throat> Well, I think I've seen a few trends kind of that have been, uh, as Alalita had uh, hinted at, moving and, and coalescing towards each other uh, for some time, right? Uh, the technology uh, building blocks uh, found in the CNCF umbrella and open source in general in this domain have really accelerated their capabilities and their ability to deliver value uh, quite dramatically, uh, you know, almost in lockstep uh, with with Kubernetes itself, you know, uh, uh, Borg and Borg Bond kind of seeded all of this, and 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 not surprisingly, you know, what you can do uh, with platforms and how you can understand what's happening <laughs> or not um, have both been, uh, you know, um, uh, coupled. Uh, so, you know, I think one of the biggest shifts in the last few years that I, I, I experienced, as well as many in in the industry, is uh, as a technology leader uh, building out platforms for teams uh, so that they can solve business challenges. Um, initially, it was almost entirely vendor driven uh, and sometimes maybe only one or two uh, at a particular enterprise or business. Uh, obviously, not, not a rule, uh, but <clears throat> increasingly uh, teams are shifting to having the ability to run their own platforms in concert with uh, a richer ecosystem of vendors. They can go a la carte if they want. They can do it all themselves if they want. Uh, perhaps they need to be air-gapped or their industry is regulated. So some portions, they actually want a vendor-driven open source solution that they run on their own infrastructure. So we're seeing all of these different use cases um, become possible now. So now technology decision makers, when they're looking to deliver value, uh, have a, a deeper catalog with more deployment options. And so they can really make solutions that, that fit the demand um, versus a one-size-fits-all uh, approach. One of the things I'd like to add there, though, is that you know you're you're correct that the you know diversity of solutions that are available today are tremendous, and but uh, it also is not to you know um, under recognize the fact that open source projects and observability specifically under the CNCF umbrella or you know having evolved as uh, you know, projects from the search space or um, other monitoring or Kubernetes spaces uh, have intersected into really paying a huge part in the technology innovation that's happening in the cloud native space, right? So 
uh, if you look at open telemetry or you look at Prometheus or you look at you know, some of the very fast growing observability projects under the CNCF umbrella, um, Cilium, you know, with EBPF and, and other projects with Pixie uh, joining in. Uh, again, it's, it's phenomenal to see the diversity of different projects and at the same time addressing different, uh, you know, solutions that they were trying to address and build in an open standards and an open source way. Right, and that intersecting with uh, traditional vendor-based uh, solutions, where the customer actually has a tremendous amount of choice now to be able to select through a baseline of open source solutions and also services that are, you know, uh, scaled up to support the kind of scale that they're looking for. Yeah, that's absolutely. I, I completely agree. Uh, in it, and in addition, it, it's kind of. Uh, it's an interesting uh, salient point that this entire landscape and many of those workloads are themselves uh, cloud native workloads. So the same observability tools that one uses to observe your own code, your own product, your own services, uh, you know, you can <laughs> you can use across uh, you know the breadth of, of these of these services. And and I think another expansion that we're going to be seeing happen, it's already happening, is the sort of the rise of control planes and having Kubernetes orchestrate not just containers and their initial surrounding um, uh, workloads, but really all manner of things. And all of those things are then observable cloud native uh, workloads. Uh, so so the, the reach and the scope of, of what they're being asked to do uh, is going to expand. So they need to be increasingly, uh, the solutions for observability need to be increasingly uh, broadening the tent of practitioners for which they are accessible. Um, uh, right, and not requiring a super steep learning curve. So uh, again, huge opportunities uh, for the entire ecosystem to innovate and compete uh, and um, move move forward um, as a domain. Thanks for, of course, explaining, you know, what observability is in today's, you know, cloud network. Now let's just uh, switch focus and talk about this survey. What was the goal behind this micro survey? What were you trying to like gain? What kind of insights were you looking for? I think that, uh, you know, again, if you look at the survey, uh, we were, you know, looking at understanding, you know, what are some of the uh, observability challenges that, uh, you know, the end users are trying to address in their uh, organizations. Uh, as, uh, you know, as the amount of data grows, for example, the the challenges and the complexity of addressing uh, you know an observability solution at scale grows right so um, if you look at some of the practical challenges or the technical challenges or the cultural challenges that are um, you know uh, different um, better, different organizations are trying to look at and arrange their and take decisions based on those challenges that they're trying to address. What kind of tooling is available? You know, what kind of uh, projects uh, are available, or you know, in going strong in terms of supporting that? So that's that was uh, really to understand what are the challenges customers and users are facing, right? And uh, the other aspect that I think that the uh, we focused on was um, really you know looking at any other concerns in the growth of uh, cloud native, you know, observability uh, projects? And, and what were some of those practical challenges, you know, in, in, in the growth? Is it complexity of the technology? Is it lack of resources or uh, just the maturity of code features or projects, you know, or is it integration? Because typically, you know, when you have existing large-scale monitoring systems already, uh, what is the cost of integrating, you know, new solutions, say for collection or for, you know, observation or processing or alerting to be able to send that, you know, to an existing legacy system that you have, right? And that's typically very expensive for organizations to also be involved in. Um, the other aspect, you know, that uh, I think the, we focused on in the survey was really to look at some of the daily operations that, um, you know, typically are happening on the, pub, you know, using uh, the uh, 
uh, cloud uh, providers versus the on-prem, you know, setups that customers or users have and or, you know, self-managed, right? Where, you know, again, there are still uh, users who have data centers that they have, you know, built out over time and they still use them. So really understanding what kind of tooling exists there and it does it intersect with the cloud native you know, projects and the tooling that is being built for a new generation. Um, Matt, did you want to add any other areas? I think we looked at tooling also a fair bit. Um, were there areas that we uh, you think we focused on otherwise also? I think as to why do these or, or why what why uh, why engage in, in, in having us having these micro surveys and, and these check ins with the community. Um, I, I think you, the points you've raised are all spot on. I think another aspect of this is around um, you know the explicit goal that the CNCF has, who, who sponsored this um, uh, activity, uh, around community building. Right, right. I mean by 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 taking a pulse, by capturing this feedback from practitioners. Uh, you know, attempting and successfully, in, in, in many cases, you know, using the, uh, these these Lego building blocks, you know, to assemble solutions that make sense to them and that meet their needs. Um, uh, it's good to highlight this up and bring more people in. You know, one of the one of the connectedness and the shared ethos of open source that pervades all of these projects. That's a that's a shared value uh, and an, an advantage. I feel uh, to to to. To, to having that as, as a core value is this open communication and collaboration, right? So in the end user community, there are case studies and you can trade notes and you can talk about your experiences, uh, what worked and what didn't and why. Uh, the, you know, these are advantages that in a non-open source, you know, closed, closed source universe, you simply don't have. You just have marketing materials and intelligent choices, you know, as much as, as you can make. Here we have this superpower. So, so I think our goal is to coalesce these communities and, and, and engage in further discussion uh, with additional actors. So I'd like to add that uh, another very significant aspect of, you know, the collaboration that Matt called out is that uh, there is a key drive towards, you know, being able to leverage open source and open standards in the observability space. And uh, that has really been a very significant, you know, uh, change in the way that large scale, you know, observability projects are, uh, you know, kind of guiding where interoperability requirements go. Like one of the examples I'd like to call out is, uh, you know, open telemetry where I am very active on as well as uh, in the Prometheus community. We actually uh, have worked closely together to make sure that in the metrics observability world, uh, we have a common standard of interoperability on the data protocol that we can actually uh, interoperate on and the uh, collaboration across, you know, all these projects which have been very innovative in themselves is also very obviously interoperable across the data that is being shared by across these different stacks, right? So I think that that's very important to recognize because Typically, you know, you had this um, um, uh, separation between open sta standards being done in something like the W3C, the open source projects running in parallel, you know, doing their own thing, solving a particular problem, and then vendor-based solutions, which are, you know, in a, uh, building out, you know, their stack on their own. But here in this, you know, generation, what we see is that there is a very close harmony and, and work that is ongoing uh, between open standards, which are also, you know, often part of the open source projects that are in the observability space, and also vendors being stakeholders in these projects so that they get the best, you know, they contribute to the standard and at the same time also to the open source code base that the end users and benefit most from. And, and I think that that's phenomenal because that's something that, you know, we actually in previous generations of open source hasn't been as aligned. So we talked about what is observability. We talked about the goal behind this uh, survey now. What are some of the takeaways or your findings where you like, you're like, hey, you know what? This is something, of course, you were expecting and this is something you were not expecting. So let's start there. 
So I think uh, one thing I was expecting uh, to see from this, uh, that you know, as I, I as a as both an end user and in, in talking with with colleagues uh, and, and observing the industry, um, you know, the general concern around the complexity. You know, one of the one of the dangers of an ecosystem that's growing so rapidly is without active, explicit communication and you know, you know, uh, training and, and or you know, dialogue, uh, it's difficult to understand how to use all of these blocks or if you're even using the right thing in the right place. So that, that didn't surprise me at all. And I, I do think that different um, projections of that theme kind of are, are throughout most of the responses. Um, but that's also a good thing. It's a huge opportunity for things like the technical advisory group on observability, you know, to help provide and not all the answers, but to provide the forum and the meeting place where those answers uh, uh, come from. One thing that, um, yeah, I, I can leave it there in the interest. <laughs> uh, do, do you want to add to that, Alita, or were there things that you, you didn't expect? Uh, just so I don't answer both sides of that. One of the things that I didn't expect was also complexity, right? Being called out as uh, one of the major, you know, aspects of uh, deployment of use and uh, also configuration, right? And and and, um, but it's uh, again, I also would say, given the state of where all the open source observability projects are at at this point in time, it's very important for uh, these solutions to be able to solve the uh, you know areas where users go and use these solutions the most, and those are really deployment complexity. Uh, you know, Kubernetes is a difficult uh, you know uh, environment to deploy in, and and you know that is not only Kubernetes, but then the observability you know solutions built for Kubernetes also uh, kind of emulate that, right? It's difficult to use an operator for most end users. So uh, complexity, I think, is an area which uh, is, is something that we need to address because we do need to, you know, as open source projects, be able to handle, uh, reduce the complexity of deployment, reduce the complexity of configuration management, uh, have better instrumentation, and, and make it as seamless as possible for an end user to use an observability solution out of the box, right? It should not be that we are reinventing Nagios again for the next generation and, and we still have the same complexity for, for the end user to be able to spin up observability and solution and instrument it, right? It should be that observability is actually baked in into the, into the systems or the container infrastructure or the infrastructure that you're monitoring, right? And that's where we want to get to. Uh, I could add too that uh, another thing that did stand out to me um, that I didn't expect, but does, I'm thrilled to see is, you know, if you, in, in the question that asked folks, uh, you know, what are some of uh, the challenges in, in any in any regard to, to moving forward with some of this tooling and this cloud native approach with in an observable way? Uh, two things that didn't really uh, risk, make, make the list, that they're actually the two lowest, was uh, the fear of bugs, you know, buggy code, and the fear that their management won't understand the value of using open source. Those are just gimme, those are table stakes now, right, for, 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 modern managers and, and and modern companies and organizations that, that they just have assumed now. So, so I think that is probably a dramatic shift again over the last, you know, three to five years uh, or even 10 years uh, when the debates around should I use open source or not were quite a bit different um, and, and mired on those two points. So that's, a, that's encouraging. Because of this, uh ongoing geopolitical crisis, cybersecurity is becoming a very big issue. What role do you think observability is going to play in the whole DevSecOps, uh, sorry, space? Because sometimes when we look at cloud, things are not like, there are no silos here. Everything is, you know, so if you can talk about that, I would appreciate that. I think that we're going to see, uh, you know, solutions being incubated in the space and brought to market very quickly for a few reasons. Uh, one, there, you know, as you pointed out, current events do make clear the the necessity and the importance of of, of this of these this capability. Um, but you know, I, I think that much th there's been a lot of innovation in the last five or six years uh, around ad tech, fintech, machine learning, model training, 
and all of the associated infrastructure uh, and, and, and learnings uh, and best pra- and good practices around, around how to implement those, um, that, that whole technology stack and, and, and thought domain into solving those challenges. That can all be brought to bear quite quickly, I, I, I posit. Uh, in addition, much of uh, the data that is needed to train all of that obviously comes out of these observability uh, uh, systems and tools. So, so it's kind of lined up in, in my view, that this would be a natural place to see a lot of innovation this year uh, and next year, either by taking, you know, off the shelf, shelf capabilities and mixing and matching them, uh, or having people bring, uh, you know, tailored uh, solutions uh, to bear. Uh, and and just like with, I think the other, the, the previous question, uh, you know, I think a differentiator for these projects um, that will both help their communities grow, but will also help the projects themselves be more sustainable and more more trusted and vetted. Um, is is how they go reach uh, a customer, Joe, uh, and and the practitioners that are trying to use them. Alalita made great points around what the technical communities need to do around aligning on open standards. I, I, I think at the same time, um, really some of the liberties that have been enjoyed by a rapidly growing ecosystem uh, are beginning to expire a bit. And, and many of these projects are going to have to consider a critical role for the success of their product to be product and or PMs and, and really folks that can help ensure that, that not only are amazing technical uh, achievements being accomplished, you know, uh, but, but that they're able to be translated and, and, and made practical and, and, and actually solve problems, not just say, hey, practitioners, here you go, because an overall industry trend is a move away from a centralized, you know, IT or infrastructure or even a DevOps group that's forward looking. You know, that's still a centralized place. And we're seeing an, an inversion of control uh, and, an, and, and a democratization, depending on which, which side of that line you're looking at, of these capabilities out to uh, lines of business who will make their own decisions. Um, and, and so, you know, uh, increasingly you can't rely on that centralized function within an enterprise or an organization to take on the cost of training and and documenting and saying what this is why do you care who does it help why right all, all of those things are now you know in an a la carte world even if it's with 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 similar open standards you know for people to use it and feel and know and be able to demonstrate to their peers that it's worth doing at all or it's worth doing with this particular solution um, uh, that's things that are, people are going to need. Uh, and, and I think projects that provide that final mile or that enabling collateral, uh, will see a, a good return on the investment, uh, for sure. A couple of interesting things I'd like to call out in the security space, especially, um, one is that um, I think there is a lot of work that is ongoing, especially in the eBPF world, to be able to actually handle um, uh, you know specific security use cases and also uh, data which needs to be uh, you know is coming from sources which are secure or need to guarantee an end-to-end secure you know pipeline even for telemetry and and that's something again both from an uh, services and systems level as well as from an end uh, user device level is something that needs to evolve, right? Because those are, I think, complex use cases. Uh, logging typically has been used in you know, those use cases for collecting telemetry data, but you also see the evolution with eBPF you know, projects as well as others it, to look at the kernel space, address security use cases, to look at the collection of, you know, uh, uh, telemetry from the other parts of the stack, whether that's network network layer or you know uh, distributed different systems uh, running on top, uh, and and being able to actually handle not only logs but metrics traces, and then being able to correlate and process and be able uh, you know in in a secure way, not only end to end for the pipeline, but also in terms of specific use cases where the data is secure, right? So there is a lot happening here um, in, the, in, in addressing those, but I think that um, we are not there yet. There's more work to be done uh, around observability, you know, being able to fully handle, um, you know, SIM use cases. 
Excellent. Before I wrap this up, one more question I want to ask you folks is since you brought it up also is the cultural aspect as you're talking about Matt and also a lot of that you talked about. Uh, open source for me, like it solves day one problem, right? Day two is where a lot of vendors come in to package it as a service or product because, uh, but more importantly, that cultural shit within companies, uh, organizations where they look at observability as part of, you know, their workflow pipelines. How, it, through the survey or beyond the survey, how much cultural shift you are seeing towards observability where, once again, you don't have to educate folks about it and companies do understand the importance and they are doing changes internally? You know, in, in terms of a cultural shift, I, I do agree. You know, uh, for, for many years, you know, in, 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 it was almost a, a meme, you know, so, so common it was it, it was well common that, you know, security is uh, not a feature. It's something that is intrinsic to writing, uh, you know, credible, workable solutions. Uh, you know, um, I think that that something should be observable, uh, you know, to the consumer of that thing is now also just, you know, it's not a check the box anymore. It, it, it just has to be there or you're not looking at it at all. I, I do think that will be the mindset. Uh, the folks have like I just you know if I'm going to invest in something I shouldn't also have to invest in figuring out if it's even working right so so that that days that day one experience um, really needs to be uh, I, I do think solid and so I think those expectations and practitioners and and in in IT groups and DevOps groups and cloud groups however they're called uh, or folks that are self-servicing for their teams you know that that that's kind of a common expectation. Um, you know, I, I ask my kids sometimes, imagine life without a cell phone, and they're just, boom. you know, I think I think it'll be that way with observability to the point where the term might not even be relevant because it's assumed as to, you know. Yes, yes. And then and, and that's what it should be, right? I mean, observability should be as core a pillar of computing as, you know, uh, with computing itself, right? And, and, and it should be just baked in. <laughs> And in terms of a cultural shift, you know, I can't echo it enough. You know, we talked about edge computing for many years as, you know, the edge of the network, you know, that that's where, you know, somewhere there's a handoff and then you get to a user. Well, the, I think the observation of cloud native systems when like, you know, you know, this is a cloud native, you know, this is a cluster, you know, my car is, my car is in that ecosystem or, you know, you know, all my vehicles, just smart transit. Like, I think we are we are now walking around in a cloud native system right so we're, so from a cultural perspective you know because it's so ubiquitous now i think it raises both some ethical another ethical uh, challenges uh to 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 us an industry to 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 build the right systems that protect privacy and whatnot but but really observability is so important because it's going to be how we observe ourselves and how we interact with each other and you know the increasingly automated potentially robotic <laughs> at, at points uh, world that we're, we're going to be walking around in right it's it's so it's very concrete now yeah and and i think that uh, again Swapnil, you know addressing the question you asked about culture right it's 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 um it's always been the case that, you know, you have several challenges in being able to have an observability first culture, right? Because traditionally it's been always say, you know, taken for granted that, hey, you know, if you're doing monitoring of a system, if you have SRE in the company, then it's the, it's the SRE's problem to, you know, go and figure it out and use the tools that they need to and just use whatever. But as you also see, you know, from a cloud native perspective, as you build out these large cloud native, uh, you know, infrastructure investments for every organization, you also need to shift the uh, skill set, the mindset of the leadership of the organization, uh, the uh, understanding of the complexity, you know, shifting at a different layer, uh, and and really, you know continuous support from your leadership and understanding benefits of, you know, why observability, uh, observability first approach day one matters, right? Because if your systems are not observable, if your end-to-end -end workflows and workloads of data are not observable, if, you're, if you uh, cannot really get a pulse real time, whether it's on your, uh, you know, IoT network or whether it's at the core of your cloud native uh, you know, services, then, you know, how do you optimize, right? How do you actually reduce root cause, uh, uh, you know, time to uh, go and address a particular and mitigate a particular problem? 
and and these are areas that you know have been as we have large scale computing which is being deployed you know at a cloud native scale these problems become even more complex to address and that is a continuous balance and learning that needs to happen in every organization as you shift that balance you know of computing not only to everything is in your control but you're now having to deal with a whole layer of cloud native services that you know have to be observable and even your end user devices that have to be in, you know observable and that's a whole mix right so uh, it changes the equation dramatically we should mention this tuesday uh, at the tag we've got the hubble project uh, as well as the Pixie project. Uh, Pixie will be giving an update of the last almost year of development since they last joined us. Uh, so that should be really great. And we're going to be getting a, an overview of uh, a portion of the Cilium project that's focused on network observability from that project we'll be presenting. And then lastly, one of the work streams uh, that, that has launched recently around making a five to 10 minute uh, news uh, segment uh, on a cadence. Uh, uh, Hendrix, Hendrix, Hendrick rather will be giving uh, an update uh, on that. So. Um, join us first and second Tuesday of the month. Excellent. Lalita, Matt, thank you so much for taking time out to and talk about not only uh, uh, this micro sur survey, actually that survey was the micro on this discussion. We had a much discussion, a wider discussion about observability. Thanks for sharing those great insights. And as I said, I would love to have you folks back on the show, but thanks for your time today. Oh, anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sapnil. It's really a pleasure to chat with you. <laughs>